Hello, everyone. Let me fix my camera, I guess, my computer screen. Gordon Causey coming now. It's Monday, April 1st, April Fool's Day, uh, still 10.30 p.m., April 1st, 2024. And thank you for watching. And as you can see, Candy is going nuts. What? 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 All right. Home can get no peace until she gets what she. She lay down. Speak. 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 Oh, good girl. Come on. Candy is taken care of, and she doesn't want pets while she's eating. Uh, cheers. I've got a quick joke to start off with. So if you just want to hear the joke, you don't have to stick around too long. It's Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, a smart version of Justin Trudeau, and a dumb version of Justin Trudeau. The four are walking down the street. Lying on the ground is a $10 bill. Who picks it up? Well, the obvious answer is the dumb version of Justin Trudeau because Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and a smart version of Justin Trudeau don't exist. But it would she. So <laughs> if all you wanted was the joke, that's great. Um, we got the carbon tax today. The increase in the carbon tax, another 15%. Gas, which a few weeks ago had been in around $1.40, give or take, in my little area, has now shot up to in around $1.60. And there is more to come. Uh, we're switching to summer gas in, in, the, in the coming weeks. And when that happens, the price goes up again. Uh, there is a, a benefit, uh, summer gas, you get better mileage from it. The octane rate is higher or something like that. Uh, I do know that I get better mileage in the summer than I do in the winter months, but, uh, everything is going to be getting more expensive. And what I've been saying to people today is, yeah, but we fix climate change. We don't have to worry about climate change anymore because now that we're paying higher taxes and everything is getting more expensive, Canada won't be suffering from the effects of climate change now and there won't be any more severe weather events because of our wonderful April Fool of a Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. And uh, this whole climate change, we all know what's going to happen. Uh, there's going to be wildfires this year. I would, I would bet money on it. Uh, well, I, I would, I won't, but I would, uh, we're going to, we're going to, there's going to be more wildfires. Uh, there's going to be more severe weather events and uh, they'll propagandize any severe weather events. And of course, blame climate change if there's anywhere there's a tornado anywhere there's a severe storm they're going to say well this is climate change this is climate change and they'll blow it up things that happen both naturally and legitimately yeah climate changes we all know this Cl climactic cycles of warming and cooling can last four or five hundred years we're in a warming trend right now Things are changing, and it's a long cycle. Yes, this is not anything that has been seen in anyone's living memory, and that's because nobody lives four or 500 years for these cycles to play out. I, I've, I've beaten the climate change uh, narrative to death. Uh, I'm so tired of it, but sadly, it's not going to change anything. Uh, this is all part and parcel of a bigger agenda, COVID, climate, gender, all the, all, all of this, all, all of this propaganda around all of these things is all geared toward basically tearing down the foundations of our Western civilization and to replace it with something that is more that more resembles fascism. Uh, 
and that that's the bottom line uh i don't have a lot to say on the matter i just wanted to do a quick little video uh encourage everyone you know when, when you come across that there are liberals out there they're like well are, are you a climate change denier no everyone in the world knows that climate changes everyone knows that we go through through these trends and they last centuries and paying higher taxes and raising the cost of everything we buy is not going to it's going to have diddly squat in terms of its impact on altering the climate. And even if we, we wanted to pretend, even if we wanted to pretend that carbon is the big bad boogeyman that these um, computer modeled simulations make it out to be, even if that were true, then Canada, we're a pipsqueak, 40 million people. China, 1.4 billion. India, 1.4 billion. The United States, 335, 340 million. Europe, 3, 400 million. Whatever Canada does, you know, even if carbon is the big bad boogeyman, that raising the, ta 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 raising the cost of gasoline and everything else is not going to impact climate one way or the other. You know, I see I have five people watching. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on the matter. Fortunately, we're stuck with Justin Trudeau for the foreseeable future. It's going to be October of 2025. So still a year and a half to go uh, putting up with this guy. And I'm noticing a full court press now, uh, something of a full court press, uh, trying to rehabilitate Justin Trudeau and the liberal image. And it will work on some. I don't think it will work significantly enough to alter the outcome of uh, 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 the upcoming election whenever it happens. And in all likelihood, I think we're looking at September, October of 2025. I don't think anything can happen to alter the outcome, uh, except perhaps either reduce the, reduce the size of the conservative majority that's coming or conversely, possibly push Pierre Polyev and his conservative party down into minority status. But I was watching him interact with a guy like me, just a member of the Joe public. And the guy had a cell phone camera video taking. And so Pierre knew he was that this was going to be disseminated onto parlor, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. So, you know, he was very careful in his words. And one of the things he said in that video was that he was committed Canada would meet its um, carbon emissions targets as per the Paris Climate Agreement, Paris Accord, whatever it's called. He said, we will meet our targets. And So does that mean that Pierre Polyev is sold on this climate change narrative? Pierre Polyev is a politician. And regardless of what he thinks personally, what he's concerned with is in garnering enough votes to win election. And a significant percentage of the Canadian population does think that human-caused climate change is, a, is an issue. And they are a not insignificant portion of the electorate. Jason King's, King got uh, says, just got here, Gordon. Happy Easter. Yeah, it's Easter Monday. Although, as I've said many times, I'm more comfortable with the term Passover, which comes up on April 22nd. Uh, Jesus went to the cross on the 14th day of Nisan on the Jewish calendar. Uh, then Rome came along and they said, how does it work? Uh, the first, uh, the, the, the Sunday following the first full moon after the uh, spring equinox, which is, and the spring equinox is usually March 21st or 2021, 20, 20, 22. So whenever the full moon, first full moon happens after that equinox, then on that Sunday, that's the day that 
uh, Rome celebrates the Passover, uh, and most Protestant churches go along with it, although not the Eastern Orthodox, which that's a there was a I haven't read enough on it, but there was a schism, there was a division in the church, and you had Rome to the west and Constantinople and the Byzantines to the east. And it's to the east, that's where we get Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, and the like. And they have a different manner of determining. And the, for, for, the, for Orthodox followers of Jesus, the Passover is going to be celebrated, I think it's all the way in May. I think it's May 5th. Uh, I don't know how they date it. Uh, the Jewish Passover is April 22nd. Anyway, uh, just to cover off a couple things that I didn't mention in my last video that I always, I, 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 I get sidetracked and then I never come back to what I wanted to say. Uh, with respect to the sign of Jonah, the passage in Matthew where the scribes and the Pharisees say to Jesus, they say, give us a sign. And Jesus says, an evil, wicked, and adulterous generation seeks a sign, but no sign shall be given to it except the sign of Jonah. And then he notes how Jonah was in the belly of the whale, great fish, for three days and three nights, and that so too the Son of Man would be in descend into the bowels of the earth for three days and three nights. And... Um, it's reckoned that, it, I'm not going to go over the story of Jonah again, but it's reckoned that when Jonah would have gone to Nineveh to warn them to repent, that around that same time, there was a solar eclipse that took place in Nineveh. And there's speculation that perhaps the reason the Ninevites listened to Jonah, their enemy, someone from an Israelite, who the Assyrians, the Ninevites, and the Israelites were constantly fighting with each other. Why did they listen to Jonah? And it's been speculated by some and that, hey, maybe, maybe an eclipse happened and the sun went dark and everyone said, oh my gosh, we, be we better listen to this Israelite. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Um, and so... In terms of the upcoming eclipse on Monday, April 8th, a week from today, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that in the in the sky, in the in the northern hemisphere where the eclipse is taking place, directly overhead, there will be a constellation of a whale or great fish, and. You can mark that down to coincidence. You can attach significance to it if you like. Uh, just something I find curious. And uh, we'll see what happens on Monday, uh, on that day, on Monday, April 8th. The one thing is, uh, with the sun going dark, even if it's only three, four minutes, uh, there's talk that that could have an impact on the power grid because the way the power grid works is as we draw power off the grid, uh, roughly equivalent amount of power needs to be going on to the grid. And a lot of electricity now is generated from solar. I've mentioned before, even in my little town, there's a field here somewhere, four or five kilometers away from me, big open field with all the solar panels. And they are putting power onto the grid. So all of a sudden the sun goes out for three, four minutes, at a time when pow when those solar cells would normally be generating electricity and putting it onto the grid, now it's going to be down. We'll see what happens. But uh, there's so much going on in the world right now that uh, everything is geared toward this, what the World Economic Forum calls the Great Reset or the Force Industrial Revolution, what I call the Fourth Reich. I've got... Mish Christie, why is this why is this solar eclipse such a big deal versus pre previous eclipses? Why the state of emergency? 
well, this will be the first solar eclipse. Um, there was one back in 2017, so that was seven years ago. And why is this one such a big deal? The internet age now, uh, the degree to which we're connected, the degree to which everyone is talking about every little thing. So it could, to a degree, be manufactured, I think. But also, again, the amount of solar power being put onto the grid could have an impact. Um, and it's just a matter, I think, when you look at everything that happened, we had the COVID era, obviously. We have this climate change narrative. Uh, we have the, you know, the whole transgender stuff. We just went through... Uh, Easter Sunday, what most people refer to as Easter Sunday, was also uh, transgender something day in the United States. Biden, you know, I don't think he said word one about Easter or about Jesus or about faith, but he sure has a lot to say. The United States, Joe Biden, Canada, Justin Trudeau, there is a religion. We are religious societies. And we now worship at the altar of our own self-perceptions. And, oh, just the world is going bat, you know what, crazy. Uh, and then there's all kind. There, there are all kinds of things with this eclipse. There are uh, the, the, the arc of the eclipse. And I got to watch this because when I do it, when I do it, my left to right is it's backwards when I wa when I watch on the screen. So I'll try and I'll go backwards for me. But when it shows up, so it's going from the southwest to the northeast. And there are seven towns that are called Salem or Salem, which is a Hebrew word. It means peace. It's from whence comes Jerusalem. And uh, there's even a town called Nivana, Nivana. And then you have, you know, the Jesus talking about how, you know, the, you know, and we can look at it in our, in our modern context, what Jesus said when the scribes and the Pharisees, they said, you know, give us a sign. And then Jesus said, and, said, and I don't have my Bible in front of me. Again, I've left it away, but I, I don't want to go get it. Jesus says, uh, a wicked, evil, adulterous generation seeks a sign. He can be saying that to us. He was saying it back then, 2,000 some odd years ago, but he could also be saying it to us because we're a wicked, evil, evil and adulterous generation ourselves. That's our culture. And we seek signs. And Jesus says, you seek a sign. The only sign you will have is the sign of Jonah. And then, you know, the, 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 the arc of the eclipse is going to be passing over a town in the U.S. called Nivana or Nineveh. I always, I always want to say Nivana, but it's Nineveh. Lots of fun. Oh, uh, Mish Christie says, disgraceful honoring, honoring LGB community on Easter. Uh, actually, it wasn't LGB. LGB, that's uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual. This was specifically with respect to transgender. It was, I, I got to do a Biden transgender day. What do they call it? Anti is something about uh, violence or persecution. Uh, transgender day of visibility. That was uh, what they declared. What most refer to as Easter Sunday. He uh, called referred to it as transgender day of visibility. And. Like, personally, if a guy wants to dress like a woman, that's fine. I don't, speaking for myself personally, I don't care. If a guy feels more comfortable 
wearing women's clothes or vice versa. If a girl, a woman feels more comfortable dressing in what are traditionally thought to be male clothes, fine. I don't have an issue. Uh, and even if they want to exhibit, if women want to exhibit male, what are more typically considered male behaviors, that's okay. And likewise with a guy who uh, has effeminate traits, that's fine. This has always existed. I mean, remember Liberace, you know, doesn't mean uh, it changes their gender. Someone's behavior expression and their mode of dress doesn't change their gender. There's still you're, you're, there's a spectrum when it comes to behavior, and we assign male, female, to certain behaviors. There's a spectrum, and guys do have on a spectrum. Aggressiveness is considered a male trait, but not all guys are aggressive. And just because a guy is not aggressive, that doesn't change his gender to a woman. Carol Hintz says, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and Miss Christie, don't worry about it. The LGBTQ, XM, XLM, men, OP, and everything else. It's insane what's happened in the world today. I started to talk in my last video about the passage in... Uh, Romans, where uh, Paul wrote, God gave them up, and I never got to it. I started reading just ahead of the passage I wanted to read, and then I didn't get to the passage I wanted to read. This is what I do. I start going off in different directions, but God gave them up, Paul writes. If you give me two seconds, I'm going to get my Bible, and I'll, I'll read it very quickly. Okay. Sorry about that. I try to speak the truth. Thank you, Carol. I try. Uh, like everyone else, though, I'm just as broken as, and as fallen as anybody. So I, this is where um, it's chapter 1, verse 24. As we're all starting Romans, therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to this to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worshipped and served and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. Their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in their own persons the due penalty for their error. This is blasphemy in, in today's world. The religion that is being foisted upon us by the World Economic Forum, by the likes of Joe Biden and Justin Trudeau, the Bible is blasphemy. We've exchanged truth for lies. And it is going to get worse. And we need to steal ourselves. We need to prepare ourselves. This, you know, everything around climate change and the carbon tax in Canada, it's almost like background noise compared. It, it's part of such a much larger agenda. And uh, I, I know that I'm screaming into a hurricane because the culture is so with the digital age that we live in, the uh, capacity for the media masters to frame the narrative and to tell and program people what to think, what to believe. They even tell us how to feel. And we're, we're in trouble. And, um, you know, when it came to the COVID, 
uh, whole COVID agenda. They were able to drive fear into a lot of people. And once you have someone afraid, you can control them. And they got people to lock themselves in their, their houses. They got uh, every, they got, millions of Canadians to willingly roll up their sleeve to take a to take an injection that had not been properly tested it, it had been rushed through at so-called warp speed uh, they knew what they knew what it would do because mRNA uh, this platform had been worked on for 20 odd years I think most here will know but if you don't check out what it did to the ferrets when they did experiments, mRNA injection therapy uh, on ferrets. I think most here will know about it. They knew what the, these shots would do, and we're seeing them do it. And I've mentioned before, watch John Campbell's state uh, YouTube channel. Most already do. Dr. John Campbell, he's a professor of nursing and a nurse practitioner himself. This, this, uh, Matthew 10, verse 6, and God created male and female, as it says also in Genesis. You know, and God created mankind, male and female, he created them. We are male and female. End of story. There is a rare, very rare uh, condition called intersex where you're either XX or XY, but sometimes chromosomes get messed up and individuals can be born with out, um, internal female organs and out, outer male genitalia. And that does happen like incredibly rare, like 0 0.00 whatever percent. Uh, but that's not what the transgender agenda is all about. I was actually I'm toying with the idea of writing a, a satirical article on an old blog that I have um, and uh, about Canada banning the song or um, I think a lot of people will remember the Kinks had a song called Lola. I met her in a bar down in old Soho where we drank champagne and it tasted just like cherry cola, C-O-L-A cola. Anyway, it's about a guy going out to a bar, picking up a woman named Lola and getting back and finding out that, you know, well, I'm not the world's most passionate man, but I know what I am. I'm a man. Oh yeah. And so is Lola. <laughs> and uh i was going to i'm thinking of writing down writing a bit of a blog post satirical saying that canada is labeling the kinks uh classic hit lola as transgender hate speech because lola identified as a woman obviously in this song uh i want to read matthew 10:6. We're going to get through this. That's the, the, the good news of all this is that if you've accepted Jesus into your heart and if you're following him, even though you stumble and fall, if you're following him, if you bow the knee, acknowledge Christ as Lord, the, the, we're just on our way somewhere. And yeah, you know, yes, the ride is bumpy, but the destination is worth it. So what, what did you write? 10 6. Uh, five. Well, uh, you don't mean Matthew. Jason writes Matthew 10, 6, and God created male and female. I think you got the wrong, because uh, Matthew 10, 6, I'm reading it right now, is, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and preach as you say going. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Nothing about gender. <laughs> that, that's uh, chapter 1 of Genesis. I'm going to do a video this Sunday. 
coming. Uh, you're going to be going heavy into faith. That's my intention. I want to look at uh, Isaiah. I want to look at Amos. I want to look at Ezekiel. I want to look at the passages from Isaiah 11, uh, chapter 11, about uh, God restoring Israel a second time. The first time was when they came back from Babylon, and the second time. And then uh, the passage in Ezekiel is about the dry bones, uh, flesh coming on the dry bones. And the third will be the end of Amos, where Amos prophesizes that God is going to shake Israel, and boy, oh boy, is Israel shaking. And it's in chapter one, uh, chapter one, verse twenty-seven. So God created man in His own image, in the image of God He created him, male and female. He created them, not male, female, uh, non-binary. Oh goodness, no, two spirit. I, I, the, the the government of Canada now says the acronym is endless. Sharunian thinks I'm well written. Uh, I well, I will publish. I'm going to write something. It's going to take a while because I wrote one a while ago that went pretty viral on Reddit and on my Facebook page, and people thought it was real. Uh, and I said that the government of Ontario, where the, the health ministry was mandating that operating t t tables be lowered so that uh, the staff working in operating rooms could uh, sit down and thereby not have to wear a mask all the time because everyone knows that masks don't work. <laughs> uh, or, or so rather, masks are not needed when you're sitting down, that they're only needed when you're standing up. And this was back when the ridiculous people would walk into a restaurant wearing a mask, sit down at the table, then take the mask off. And if they had to go to the bathroom, they got up, put the mask back on. Uh, you know, SARS-CoV-2 only floats in the air, at, you know, not not at the seated position. I took some time, wrote it up, and it went ballistic on Reddit. Uh, it got like a thousand, thousand uh, upvotes and nuts. Anyway. I'll leave you now with that. Uh, uh, got a lot of thoughts rolling around in my head. We all need this book. That's all I'm going to say. And if anyone wants to challenge me on it, I'm okay with that. Uh, I do know the objections. They were my own objections for many years. I was off the path from my late teenage years until the age of 40. So I know the arguments against faith very well. And uh, anyway, thanks again for watching. I'm going to go. It's after 11 o'clock. I'm going to tap out for now, and we'll see you all in a few nights. God bless.